Recently, I picked up on making maps for Tabletop Simulator in 3D through Blender. Uh, and I noticed that the updated Blender has changed some of the props, process, some of the steps, uh, and, or I found ways to avoid some of the issues that other tutorials have left me with. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time talking outside of the little script I made, uh, and I'll try to detail every step cleanly and quickly so that you guys can use this to reference your own map making pretty easily. Uh, after you open Blender, I want you to select everything with A and then hit Delete. Uh, that'll delete everything in the scene and give you a clean workspace to work with. You might have noticed I moved my camera around a little bit. Uh, you can move your camera around with middle mouse button that'll let you rotate around, or you can hold left shift and middle mouse button and you can drag your camera around. Once you've done that, go up to edit mode in the top left and then click preferences at the bottom of the drop down. Search for images or import images as planes in the top right corner and then enable it when it pops up below. Once you have enabled, you shouldn't have to re-enable it and you can exit preferences. Once you've exited preferences, you can import the image you wish to edit as a plane into Blender. Once you've done that, go to uh, press S and then scale the image up slightly. Uh, don't worry about not being able to see the texture. You just want to make sure that your image is large enough that when you import it into Tabletop Sim, it feels like a map and it's not small enough to where it can't be scaled up properly. Once you've got that done, go ahead and press A to select the image plane and then enter edit mode with tab or by changing your mode in the top left corner. Right click on your image plane and then click subdivide. Repeat that process until you're satisfied with the amount of vertices you have. Uh, you can go even higher if you really want to. The more you subdivide, the more detail can be put into sculpting without issues uh, in the textures or breaking of the model, but it also increases the complexity, and if you go too crazy, it might need to be simplified before you put it in a tabletop simulator. Uh, in order to see that image as you edit it, click Viewport Shading in the top right next to your scene collection. Uh, you can kind of take a look at how the model looks now. It'll be a little bit translucent, but don't worry about that. Once you've finished all that, you're going to want to go into Sculpting in the top bar next to modeling and UV editing, and then you'll want uh, to turn on viewport shading again if you want to see the image as you sculpt it. Uh, sculpting in Blender works pretty simply, and we're only going to use a few tools here. I'm just going to use the drag tool. Uh, and uh, if you've never used Blender before, it might be overwhelming, but don't worry about it. You can do pretty much everything with one tool. Uh, so you go up and down the model, sculpting it how you want. This is just a simple temporary uh, map that I've already made once, so I'm just going to do a quick run over it. Once you've had it sculpted, you still need to add a hitbox. Uh, so you want to exit sculpting mode uh, and go back into edit mode. Now, once you're in edit mode, uh, we're going to first before the hitbox, as I almost forgot, we're going to create the boundary by, or the border. By creating the border, uh, you turn your object to a more solid looking piece of, uh, of terrain. Uh, by holding Alt and Shift and then left clicking on the outside of your object on each plane, uh, you'll grab the edges of your object. Uh, you shouldn't have to be precise, you can click outside the actual vertices, it'll still work. Once you have all of those uh, outside borders selected, press E, which will select all of them and let you move them around, and then Z, which locks them onto the y-axis, uh, and then pull it down until you feel like you have enough depth in your object uh, that's necessary. Once you're done with that, press S and then Z again. This will allow you to set your, uh, your bottom line vertices all the same rate. After S and Z, press 0. That'll lock them all to the same plane, and then you can press Enter, which will create the uh, selection permanently. If you press F after that, it'll create the bottom plane of the image, which will create a full kind of 3D effect to the object. 
Everything after this is optional and only for people that want varying heights and custom hitboxes. Uh, if you import the objects as are, they'll be fine, but they'll have uh, automatically generated hitboxes from Tabletop Simulator, which can be kind of broken. Uh, so to create the hitboxes, uh, you press Shift A and then Mesh, and then you select the shape that best fits the hitbox you need to create. If you want your new collision box to be as accurate as possible to the image plane model you've created, uh, that's that's great, but you can just put hitboxes where you intend models to be. You can avoid placing hitboxes where models aren't going to go. Uh, and hitboxes do affect physics, so if you put anything really tall or uneven, or if you don't add a base plate to your model, it might just tip over and fall over and or fall to the map, etc. You want to go over to the object panel in the right hand corner or side of blender it looks kind of like a square with the border around it go down to viewport display and then change the display to as wire or display as to wire uh, to make it majorly invisible while you edit it Once you're satisfied with the look of your model and the hitboxes you've created, you'll need to export them as separate model files. So you're going to want to hold shift and select all of your hitboxes in the top right in your scene. And go to file in the top left and click export in the drop down menu. Click wavefront object or obj file and make sure when you complete your export you select selected objects only uh, to make sure you aren't uploading it all at once or exporting it all at once. exported your hitboxes, select the mesh of your image plane by itself, and then export that as well. It should result in four files, two OBJs, two MLTs. The MLT is not important for Tabletop Simulator, so you can delete those. Uh, and make sure you still have the image that you use for the image plane alongside your two OBJ files. Uh, once you have them all prepared, we can hop over to Tabletop Simulator. Once you're in Tabletop Simulator, create a single player game, go to Components, then Custom, then Model. Once you have the model screen pulled up, you can upload all the files you have uh, to create your model in the game. Uh, you want to upload your OBJ file, uh, just the model mesh itself, uh, to the first selection. You want to upload the OBJ file of Collision to your Collider's uh, file, and then you want to upload the image you use to the fuse slash uh, image. So the image that you use to create the model slash mesh should also be used for the defuse slash image. Uh, I also changed the material to cardboard. Um, I think a few, pretty much everyone does this, it's just to avoid shininess. Uh, and you can upload it as a couple different objects and it st should still work fine. Uh, if you want to back up these models, there's a few extra steps you need to take and I'm not going to go into that. I just keep a photo, a folder with all the files saved on it on my computer, so if anything ever breaks, I can just re-upload it to Tabletop Simulator. Uh, I hope it was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, the process, as I know right now, works fine, and if it becomes outdated, I'll probably just delete the video. Have a good one.